We're Laura and Aaron, and three years ago, we set out looking for a simple life of freedom in nature. We didn't have any money, but we managed to build this cabin on wheels out of scrap wood and drove until we reached the mountains. Ever since, we spent our days exploring forests and meadows and parking our little home out here on the wild side. Woke up really early this morning before dawn in our little wooden camper van and headed straight out to try and catch the sunrise. We wandered up the mountain for 10 minutes and came to our favourite hidden alpine lake at the top. If you watched our last episode you'll know that we've been dwelling in this camping spot for a bit longer than we should have done but we can't deny that this is probably the best wild camping spot that we've ever found and it's really hard to leave to be honest. But as the days go by, we are very aware that we do need to be leaving Europe really, really soon. And so we're just kind of trying to make the most of the last sacred moments that we have calling this place home. And we thought that one really gorgeous way to do that would be just to wake up, watch the sun rising over the mountains and have a calming little morning swim. honestly does feel like we're kind of cheating the system when we find camping spots like this. Usually we move on every few days but we've been here for about a week and nobody cares, there's no rules and so we've been more or less living here for free which is crazy because usually to access a lifestyle where you've got a little cabin and a place as tranquil and captivating as this you'd have to be a millionaire but thankfully there's still a loophole in some places where you can dwell in nature's peace and beauty without much money by living in a van and sacrificing a few modern comforts for the freedom of life on the road and all the gorgeous places that you find along the way. Laura always stays in the water a little bit longer than she should so when we got back to the van I made her a hot drink to try and warm her up a little bit and it wouldn't be long before the sun had risen fully above the mountains warming our little home and us too. Another thing we really want to make the most of before we have to leave this place, other than that beautiful lake, is the amazing wildflowers that carpet the earth here. They're just so abundant and Luffy took the lead on this one, deciding to have a little nap in the meadows, so we thought to join her too and just let the bees and the butterflies fly around us, do their thing and try and ingrain this beautiful place in our memory. While the earth stripped bare 
Somewhere in my memory Going back now centuries I can recall the time of ancient past Before we moved so fast So I wonder Today is our last day in the mountains and I'm finally getting around to something that I've been wanting to do since arriving here and seeing all the flowers, which is using the little petals as makeup. Um, so I've got nowhere special to go or anything, but dressing up as a little flower fairy makes me feel happy. So yeah, I'm just going to be taking the little petals from these little babies and decorating my face. Subconsciousness step out into the garden Bare feet treading tentatively Eyes begin to sharpen Crouching down a running leaf Brushes past my ankles Birds begin to sing to me As my thoughts begin to wrangle What do I know about nature and her needs? Blindly assume All I need is just the petals and a little bit of lip balm. Any lip balm will do. It just helps the petals to really stick to your skin rather than falling off. And you can either apply the lip balm directly onto the flowers or you can rub it into your skin and then press the flowers into where you've applied the lip balm. I'm not wearing any other makeup for this, just a bare face because I wanted it to be as earthy and natural as it possibly could be. But I would say if you wanted to try out a little flower fairy look like this, then definitely check the species of the flowers that you pick before sticking them on your face because some flowers can be irritable or even toxic to touch. I think it turned out pretty cute and the flowers aren't falling off either which is really good and Aaron offered to take a few little photos of me out in the meadow with the mountains behind just to kind of capture this moment of our lives in time and maybe we'll look back on them one day and remember the day that we spent in the meadows at this gorgeous little camping spot. Me and my subconsciousness go out into the garden just in time for sunset as the sky begins to darken Overgrown and tangled up, the bramble needs some preening All the weeds have sprouted out and the grass is barely breathing Sadly, we've got to leave this place this morning and begin our long drive back to England. Yeah, the reason we're leaving is because we've got a talk at a big festival in England all about van life in a few days' time. So we've got to make sure we're back in time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's going to be really sad leaving the mountains, but at least we do have something so exciting to look forward to. And that's really going to help to soften the blow. But for now, we're going to say goodbye to the lovely mountains and the wildflowers and hopefully we'll be back.
Not long after we set off on our journey back to England, we passed these waterfalls and we so badly wanted to pull over and just spend a few more days here. But that's kind of the thing with life on the road. There's always something around the corner that you didn't know was there that you might miss or that you have to move on from because the world is just so big and there's so much beauty to see. But we'd rather leave somewhere yearning for more than have stayed for too long and have been bored of it or just wanted to leave. When we first set off for the French Alps, this was the very first spot that we stopped off at. It's called Lake Onsi, and the water is like the warmest lake water that we've ever swum in before, and it's so beautiful and turquoise. We thought it would just be such a perfect spot to kind of finish the trip off with as well, and kind of come full circle with that, especially since it was completely just on the route back to England. It was also just ideal for us, to be honest, to be able to cool off after a day of driving in the French countryside in the summer heat with no air conditioning. It can get quite sweaty sometimes driving in summer and we are very aware of our little poodle as well. She's such a fluffy little thing. We do worry that she gets too warm in the summer so we decided to bring her into the lake too as much as she absolutely hates being in water. We thought that getting the lilo out might help to sort of acclimatise her and very gradually expose her to the water that she's so, so scared of. Before we left the mountainous region, we stopped off at a shop to get some of our favourite alpine goodies. As you can see, I got myself lots and lots of these things called roshtis, which are these fried potato patties, and they're absolutely amazing and vegan, and I'm completely obsessed with potatoes, so um, these are a perfect treat for me. For my soul, all that we built with our own design, ready to break in a dark demise. I can't escape, but I have to try to get a grip of my worrying mind. It's a long 12 hour drive all the way up to the top of France where the British border is. And to be honest with you, we're not really interested in the landscape in between here and there. So we like to cover this in as quick a time as possible. So we're doing this in two days, so two solid days of driving, which can be quite exhausting, but it means that we get to spend more time in the mountains because we are limited for time in the EU. So it might look like in this video in particular that we travel super fast, but it's actually not the case. As soon as we get to the area that we want to be exploring, we barely move at all we might travel like maximum 30 minutes a day but often we just stay in one place for a couple of days Of 
obviously Britain is an island, so in order to get there from mainland Europe, we have to cross the water, which for us means boarding onto a little ferry. So we just drive onto it and there's a little passport control just as there is in airports and it's not too expensive, the ferry. And then once we're all parked up, we do have to leave the van and make our way up to the passenger deck at the top of the ferry. It takes about an hour and a half for the ferry to cross the little strip of ocean that separates the UK from mainland Europe. We always enjoy just watching the waves and the seagulls flying overhead and looking out for the very famous white cliffs of Dover which signal our arrival back in England. It's not far from the ferry port back to London where my family live and it is weird going back there knowing that my dad's not going to be there and going back to the house where he died but it really does make these moments with family even more precious and makes me cherish them even more. We do travel a lot so we don't get to spend as much time with our families as maybe we would like and that is just one of the sacrifices of living on the road. But it makes something as simple as a family meal feel really special to us and tonight we're having a summer barbecue with my mum, brother and my great uncle. After a short but very precious time visiting our families, we've arrived at WOMAD Festival, which is all about celebrating music from all over the world, so there's some really, really great musicians that are going to be playing here. We're all parked up and we're ready to enjoy the first night of the festival. Yeah, it is a bit weird though because dogs aren't allowed here, so um, we had to leave Lufu with my parents. They're yeah. looking after her for the weekend. It's so weird that she's not like barking every time I open the door. <laughs> it's so strange without her. It's weird without our little baby. Yeah, and also it's the first time we've actually been to a festival with our van. We haven't been to one since we've done the van up. So yeah. it's really nice to just have like our home here yeah. with all our supplies yeah. rather than like a tent and just a few little cans of food. It definitely feels like a bit more luxurious and more comfortable. Definitely. much footage whilst we were at the festival because it's only a few days long and we just wanted to be present and soak up as much of it as we could um, but our talk went really really well we were really surprised we were expecting maybe 30 people to come but the place was crammed out there was like over 200 people there and spilling out the sides um, I actually got quite nervous and kind of 
messed up my speech a little bit because I wasn't expecting that many people to be there. But we think we shared some really insightful stuff about how to build a van and live on the road for a very low budget. So hopefully people learn something. There were so many performances and installations and workshops, we were running off our feet trying to see it all, but we just love festivals so much because they're such a kind of condensed environment with so much creativity and inspiration and kindness all in one place. It feels to us like we're kind of traveling back in time to the summer of love where everyone just expressed themselves so freely and let go of their inhibitions and was so loving to strangers. And we just adore that festivals bring that out in everybody. If you enjoyed watching this, there are loads more relaxing vlogs of our van life adventures in forests, meadows and mountains coming soon. So be sure to subscribe to our channel where we share our simple life of freedom, parking our little cabin on wheels out here on the wild side.